Hello everyone, well I know it's been a long time since I last did a video, but I thought I'd share with you something that I purchased recently, a Volophone 22. It is a Google free or a de-googled Android phone that you can also install other operating systems on, for example Linux operating systems, the Ubuntu Touch. Yeah, it costs 452 euros, but I end up paying, well, with a few other bits, it's 404 pounds plus an 80 or 90 pound import tax. So yeah, getting on 500 pounds. So that's uh, only about 100 pounds cheaper than a Pixel 6. So quite a hefty amount to pay on a phone, a bit of a commitment to go for on something you would consider as uh, getting your privacy back. Which yes, I could say getting your privacy back, but getting your convenience back, oh no you're losing out on a lot of convenience. So here's the Vodafone 22 that I purchased, uh, the box that came in and I've got a desk stand and a back cover. Well, I thought it was meant to be a screen protector. It's just a sort of back cover that I guess juts out over the screen a little bit and could potentially protect it. So there's a 6.3 inch display at 2340 by 1080. There's a little V notch for the front camera and that's an eight megapixel camera. Next to it is an LED indicator for when you get a missed call or text message. On the back there's a fingerprint reader, two cameras and a flash. Two cameras, it says a dual 48 megapixel wide angle and sort of normal camera. And there's the Vola logo that features during the system boot up on the phone. On the side we have power button and volume up and down. Nothing on that side. Uh, on the base, we have the USB-C microphone and three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Starting the phone up, you get this springboard menu by default. If you hold your finger down on the circle on the bottom right hand side, you get this pop-up menu and there are a few actions on there that you can do. You can also customize these actions. Yeah, it is a bit of a different layout. I'll give them that. You can also get access to applications as well by sliding across to the left hand side. Uh, I found this a bit sort of confusing. I didn't really get what you can really do with it, but you can sort of quickly select a few things and you can also get the app list. It's an alternative to the layout I've been used to on Android. And yeah, they make this big thing about privacy protection. Yes, that is fair enough. We know that uh, using Google phones, you are the product. You're paying for it with your data. There are some features that I didn't actually get into using. They've got a security mode, which looking at their own promotional video, it's more if you want to limit what uh, the websites, what apps children can access. Installing apps with Volo OS. So they give you access to Aurora Store, which allows you to use the Google Play Store, which sounded quite a good idea to me because I've got some things I have to do with work that I am dependent on installing apps from Google Play what Android apps can you install. So anything that's compatible with Android 9, do not rely on Play services. Well, I think the version of Android is a little bit higher or the version of Android they forked from. They forked from Android and then removed a lot of tracking elements as far as I understand it. You can see the origins of this phone. If you slide down from the top, you get access to the settings menu. Just looking at the display menu here and we'll see the various options here, but I did like the lift wake feature. So lifting up the phone will show the screen. I normally unlock the phone via the fingerprint reader, as I was rather keen to get a phone with a fingerprint reader on the back. I found that so convenient these days and just a lot better than having to put a code in at the screen. That's what I could see would be the option on a lot of these cheaper Linux phones. That's pretty much why I went for this higher end phone. The storage on there is 128 gig. That is the most I've had on a phone. The account setup is pretty much where its weak point is. It's just nowhere near as convenient as the setup on the Google phones. One of my real issues about the phone is the lack of convenience on the setup. Now, if I just want to compare the Google Pixel phones, so I recently smashed my Pixel 3a. And although it doesn't look too bad on the broken glass there, it actually made about a third of the screen completely blacked out. And the remainder was sort of 50-50 whether you could actually see it or not. Uh, so basically unusable, unusable to even read anything on there. And I wanted to get the data off and put it back to my old Pixel 1. So I did a factory reset on the Pixel 1 and then start the Pixel 1, connect a USB cable to the Pixel 3, kind of take a guess on where the buttons were to enable the data transfer from the Pixel 3a. And that was it. I kind of took a guess 
got it working. And my Pixel one then had all my contacts, text messages, browser shortcuts and settings. And that was it. I was able to get going again. But with Vola OS, how do I get my contacts on the phone with Vola OS? There are several ways. Here are three variations. And I did try this one. So export your address book into a VCF file and then copy it onto the phone and import it with their contacts app. But yeah, they do need to have a way of getting the data off an existing phone. You know, it's unlikely this is going to be someone's first phone. You know, I imagine a lot of people would be in my situation coming across from Android or Apple for the first time into a Linux phone. And looking about the phone, you can see it does mention two SIM card slots, although neither are currently occupied. I took my SIM back out to using my Pixel phone because I wasn't getting on with this. It says it's based on Android 11. That's presumably what they've started gutting to make use of. There's a couple of versions behind these days, but as long as they're maintaining it, it should all be okay. I'll take a look at the dialer. Oh, I've got to set up uh, some permissions here. So something that's missing is my contacts. Now, I did import the contacts in the way that they suggested, but not brought them in onto the phone or messaging app. And the contacts are there if I look at the contacts app, which I'm not going to show you. So I've got contacts, but I don't have contacts. That's the situation. So that's really disappointing. That's just gone completely wrong there and made it very difficult now to use the phone. There's a notes feature in this menu. Great. But that's a far cry from the notes app on Google where I could share the notes with others. I mean, I have done that with sharing a note of missed quids for items we're looking at buying, so we can remove them from the note when we've bought something. Of course, I've lost access to that now. The apps view has a selector between most used and I think everything here. I haven't gone too mad for installing things though. So, um, yeah, put DuckDuckGo on. Um, just as well, it's not showing things here. I was looking at car insurance earlier. Yeah, I'm not buying through a price comparison website though. I just go to the company that offers the best deal or, or like try and uh, get mine to offer a better deal. The default browser I've been using is the Phoenix browser. I don't know why it's not so I've got an internet connection. The Wi-Fi must be a bit weak over this side of the house where I'm trying to film in. The camera on here will look very blurred. It's against the worktop at the moment. I can look at the different cameras. So there's the front facing camera and the wide angle lens. Something that the camera is missing is the alignment. Something that the Pixel phone does show you, so you can try and hold the phone straight. There's VPN, Hide Me VPN, which I'm not really interested in using. VPNs have a time and a place, and I don't have a time and a place for it. Use VPN for work, though. Managing the pre-installed apps on here through the F-Droid store. There's no way of uninstalling the pre-installed applications. Yeah, it's missing the uninstall button. Reminds me of a normal Android phone, that. Although at least there's not so much on here. Sort of simple contacts, dialer, file manager, gallery, yeah, use for all that. VPN, nah, not really interesting. So some bloatware, but not horrific. So comparing the weight of the phones to some of the other phones I've got here. So it comes in at 212 grams, 211 it's showing here. And this is a 6.3 inch display. And for perspective, here is a Google Pixel 6, and that has the same dimensions, but only weighs 205 grams. It's a little bit thinner, although uh, that bit that juts out on the Pixel 6 does make it a little thicker perhaps, but yeah, the most of the Pixel 6 is thinner, I would say. But yeah, that, that part that juts out is probably fairly similar in thickness to the Vola Phone 22. And the Pixel 1 for comparison, <laughs> yeah, the Pixel 1's a lot smaller. And it's a lot lighter, 144, 143 grams. But something you can't do on the Pixel phones is take the back off. There's a little notch here on the Vola Phone 22. It's not the easiest thing, so it's difficult to get purchase on it, trying to get the back off. Um, yeah, I've done it a couple of times now and <laughs> starting to get the uh, knack of it a little more. But yeah, it does pop out. And there you are, you've got access to the battery. So you can replace the battery and you've got two SIM cards. I think that's an SD card there. And on the back of the case, you've got NFC and I think it's got uh, wireless charging as well. 
So I took some photos with the Vodafone 22 and a Pixel 6 and a Pixel 1. I carried all three phones around with me, and so I was pretty much standing in the same spot when I took these. But I have to say the difference in quality is astounding, and especially when we get to the wide angle lens, the Vodafone. This almost looks like it has taken on a completely different day. That's shocking. So the Vodafone has the highest resolution of the pictures. These are 8,000 by 4,500 pixels. The Pixel 6 is 4,032 by 2,268. Overall, I've noticed the Pixel 6 colors are a lot richer. If anything, the Vodafone 22 is more on par with the Pixel 1, albeit at a higher resolution. The indoor shot of Raspberry Pi doesn't look too dissimilar, but I noticed the Pixel has blurred some of the background and it's trying to focus on like one key area. I do wonder how much of that is software versus the camera. I think overall the spec of the phone isn't too bad. It's a MediaTek CPU, 2 gigahertz, 8 cores, and it's got 4 gig of RAM, which is a bit less than the Pixel has, but it's not horrific on spec, but a lot of the difference really has been with the setup and usability, and that is where it has really fallen down for me. And it's almost at a point that I just can't jump into it. I was hoping to. I was hoping to literally just do a swap over and get going with a new de-googled phone, but I can't at this point. No, I'm gonna to have to take my time, get everything set up, get anything like cloud storage of photos done. I know I used to use Nextcloud at one point. I've decommissioned that server, so I might want to look at recommissioning it synchronizing contacts, browser settings, and uh, something I hadn't mentioned there with browser settings. I have been using Chromium on my desktop for some time, but the cloud sync of that has stopped. So it's a problem I'm going to have to get over pretty soon because I'm going to have to upgrade the KDE Neon Ubuntu 20.04 to the KDE Neon 2204 at some point. So yeah, I will be looking at probably using Firefox or one of the derivatives of Firefox for that. Um, I did start doing it, so I did get a couple of things into the Phoenix browser on the phone. So yeah, that's something I'm gonna have to do and would have to do either way. But yeah, overall it's not an easy route. Definitely not easy at all. So unfortunately at the moment, the Vodafone 22 is gonna go back in the drawer until I can invest the time in getting it all set up. And I will carry on using the aging Pixel 1 Possibly might buy a 6A, depends what I feel like doing. Bear in mind I've just sunk nearly £500 into this phone and I'm not using it. So a lot of wasted money there if I do end up doing that. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.